Hey there, wonderful people, it's Genevieve, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful drawing community. In this video, we are going to learn how to draw really cool folk art inspired moths, which I know might sound crazy, but look at them. They look really cool. So grab your drawing tools and let's get started. And guys, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, I haven't been feeling great recently and I'm really struggling with my voice today, so I'm sorry if I sound strange. But I'm really gonna try my best and hopefully by next tutorial it should be <laughs> all back to normal. So we're going to start, like always, by creating a new canvas. The dimension of your canvas depends on your own project. Here are the ones that I'm using and it's literally just the size of the screen because it's just a demo. If you're new to digital art and you're not exactly sure how to pick a canvas size, I have a video all about it so you can definitely check it out, it will be linked in the description below. Now for this tutorial, we're going to also change the color of the background. So I recommend going with a charcoal gray, not quite black because we want to have some shadows behind the moth, but still very, very dark. And to make things easier, we're going to activate symmetry. So to do that, go in the wrench icon menu, activate the drawing guides and select edit drawing guides. So the setup we're going to do here is very simple. First of all, select symmetry and then in the option, select vertical. That's it. <laughs> now, the color at the top here is just to set the color of the guide. It doesn't affect the final result. And same with the thickness and opacity here at the bottom. That's really just for the guide. So I'm going to personally make it super bright so that you guys can see it in the video. But that is definitely up to your own personal preferences. So once you're done, just click on done and then open your layer panel. And we're going to create a new layer to actually start drawing. So this first layer we're going to create is going to be renamed to body and we're going to draw the body of the moth. I don't know if that's what it's called, but <laughs> that's what I'm going to call it. And for this tutorial, we're going to stay with one specific hue and then we're just going to play with the saturation and the brightness of this hue. So I'm going with orange and you're going to start with the lighter version of your color. So in my case, I'm going with a cream color. And for this, we're going to draw with the studio pen, which comes in the inking panel of the basic Procreate brushes. But we're going to change it a little bit. So double tap on it. And then from the first menu, so the stroke path menu, you're going to play with the streamlining option, probably putting it somewhere around 40%. And we can see what it does. It basically just smooths the curve. So that's going to help us having nicer, smoother shapes. And you're gonna see something, I forgot I made a mistake, but I'm leaving it so that you can see that. I make mistakes too. So on this body layer, you need to activate drawing assist. So just double tap on the layer and then select drawing assist. And now you're gonna see everything that you draw on one side is going to be automatically repeated on the other side. So that's the symmetry that we set up earlier. So you're going to draw this uh, kind of inverted teardrop shape, then you're gonna fill in the color and you might want to tweak the ends a little bit, but basically that's it. Super simple. We're also going to add some antennas on this layer. So nothing complicated here as well. You're just drawing, well, one line because it's going to be mirrored on the other side. And then you're kind of drawing these little fluffy hairs, I guess, on the antenna uh, to make it look like more of a moth instead of a butterfly. And um, <laughs> I had to practice saying antenna listening to uh, Google Translate for like two minutes. Uh, <laughs> So hopefully I'm saying it right, but if not, I hope you're enjoying laughing at my pronunciation. Now with the body done, we're going to be ready to start drawing the wings, which I honestly, that's, that's the most fun. So create a new layer, put it below the body and rename it to wing top. Because <laughs> we're going to draw the kind of two parts of the wings on separate layers, so it's just easier to add textures later. And on this layer, don't forget, activate drawing assist. For the color, you're going to just select a slightly darker and more saturated version of your hue. So in my case, it's kind of this like peachy color, I guess. <laughs> and you're going to draw this sort of uh, wing shape <laughs> for your wing. And the only thing you need to really be careful about is that your outline is fully closed so that when you use the auto fill function, it is like contained in the wing shape. And again, you can see it automatically repeats on the other side, so that's super helpful. 
We're going to do the same thing with the wings for the bottom. So creating a new layer, putting it below wing top and renaming it to wing bottom. <laughs> Again, this time don't forget to activate Drawing Assist because we want to have the symmetry between the wings. And for the color, same thing, you're just going to pick a darker version of your hue. So in my case, I'm getting to this like burnt orange. Well, not quite burnt orange, but just darker orange. And here you might kind of struggle seeing your line a little bit. So don't hesitate to go ahead and hide the top wing layer so that you can fully draw your outline and then fill it in. And take the time to really draw a shape that you like and you're fully happy with for your wings because this is really the base of your moth and if you're not quite sure about the shape well it's going to be hard to get a final result that you're happy with and one thing that you can do to kind of help see your wings better and just add a nice effect overall is lower the opacity of the top wing layer not quite a lot just like around 95 percent or something like that but that's going to just add a little bit of dimension and it's also going to allow you to see the shape of the bottom wings a little bit better another thing you can do to kind of change your shape really quickly is making sure your wing layer is selected if you use the arrow tool if you set it to distort or freeform you're going to be able to kind of change the shape a little bit so you can kind of extend the wings in one side or one direction and just change the proportions until you're happy with it. So I'm definitely going to do that both on the bottom wings um, and the top wings. So you can just go back in your layer panel selecting the top wings if you want to change them as well. And again, same thing with the arrow tool, set it to freeform or distort and then you can just play around with the shape of your moth a little bit. And now we're going to add a little bit of texture to the wings. And to do that, I'm going to show you a really cool magic trick. Um, you probably know it by now if you've watched my other tutorials, but it's super helpful. And it's basically to create a clipping mask. So to create a clipping mask, you're going to start by creating a new layer. And you're going to rename this layer to textures top or something similar, because we're going to use this layer for only the wing top part. And if you double tap on the layer, you're going to have this clipping mask option here. And now everything that you draw on this texture top layer is going to stay within the shape of the layer below it, which is the wing top layer. And there are so many different brushes that you can use to add the texture. So I'm going to be suggesting a few and you can, you know, experiment and pick the one that you like the most. So the first one would be the 6B compress in the charcoal menu. Then you could go in the sketching panel and experiment with the 6B pencil, maybe even the artist crayon. Uh, you could also go in the painting section and take either the stucco brush or like pretty much any other brush in the painting section. Um, if you have my own bundle, you can go in the gouache section and pretty much use any one of these that would work really well. Again, in my bundles, you could go with the pencils and play with probably the 6B pencil, maybe the 8B as well. Again, you can really experiment. I'm personally going to go with a brush from my illustration bundle, so the basic texture brush. But again, all of those are going to work. Basically, we're just adding some texture here so you can try and find the one texture that you want for your moth. So making sure you are on your texture top layer. You're going to tilt your pencil, so you're going to angle it so that it's, you know, almost horizontal on the screen. And that's going to allow you, depending on the brush that you're using, at least the brushes that I make, I always include tilt. But it basically allows you to create a softer texture that you can kind of cover large areas with, as opposed to, you know, getting a, um, like, thin pencil line. So you're going to do that on both wings. I quite like to make it darker around the body and then fade it, so creating sort of a texture gradient. But you don't have to do that, you could just add the texture um, equally on both wings for the entire wings. So once you have your top texture, go ahead and create a new layer above the wing bottom layer. And this one you're going to rename it to texture bottom. I know it's, it's a bit confusing, but look at the screen, it's going to make a whole lot of sense. And then you're going to apply this uh, texture bottom layer as a clipping mask. And you're going to select a slightly darker version of your color. And just like you did for the top wing, you're going to add the texture um, in the same way, basically. So focusing on the, the part of the wing that is closer to the body, you're going to create this gradient from yeah, the top of the wing towards the edge of the wing. And this really doesn't need to be perfect, you know, we're just trying to add a little bit more texture to shapes that otherwise would be super flat. 
and we're going to do the same thing well not quite the same thing but we're going to add some texture on the body as well so go ahead and create a new layer above the body layer and this one you're going to rename it to texture body <laughs> And don't forget to apply it as a clipping mask. So just tapping on the layer here, selecting clipping mask. And now for the color, you're going to select the base color you use for the body and you're going to make it slightly darker, but I like to keep it a little bit more in the gray area as opposed to more in the, the orange. And for the body, I kind of like drawing a few sections. So slightly curved horizontal lines. And then from those horizontal lines, I create my little gradient. So as you can see, I'm just starting from one line and then kind of extending it in a gradient towards the next one, but not quite touching the next one. I'm not sure if that explanation makes sense, but <laughs> I'm sure you can um, understand with the video example. And guys, if you've watched this far in the tutorial, please go ahead and comment the word moon. It's been really so much fun having this kind of secret password situation in, um, in the videos the past few weeks because it gives me a lot of insight in how to edit my videos better and it's also really cool because like I always say you guys know me but I don't know you and whenever you leave a comment I get to see your name or your username and it's just so nice to see the wonderful drawing community that we're building here on this channel. So go ahead and comment the word moon and let's keep going. So once you have all your texture applied, we're going to start adding the little drawing details, which is just so much fun. And it really creates, you know, the entire piece, basically. Without them, it looks super boring. So go ahead and create a layer on top of your texture top layer, so right below the body layer. And we're going to split uh, the details into two layers. And the first one you're going to name details light so all the lighter details we're going to draw on this layer and later we're going to create another layer for the darker details that being said make sure that you activate drawing assist on your detail light layer so that we can have the symmetry and for this you can use again a bunch of brushes i'm going to go with the outline brush from my illustration bundle but you could use in the sketching panel the 6b pencil if you want a free procreate brush that's going to work really well too now, for the details, there's really no rule. You can drop pretty much anything that you want on your wings. I personally really like having some sort of a magical, mystical vibe. So you can see here I'm drawing some super simple branches with leaves. So just one main stem with secondary stems and like little ovals or leaves on the end. Nothing crazy, but it looks good in the end. And it's kind of like the same as doing a mandala, you know, you're just trying to fill in the shape with other shapes <laughs> and basically play with composition and just, you know, disconnect, chill. This is not a precise project. We're just having fun. We're experimenting. You can see here, I am experimenting. I'm trying to draw eyes on the wings and turns out you're going to see at the end, I'm going to erase it and just draw a moon instead. But this is really just about experimenting and doodling and filling your moth with shapes that you like. So you can give really your personality in the moth just by picking certain shapes and certain um, objects that you want to draw. And the reason we're drawing the light details on a separate layer from the dark details is so that we can change the blending mode. So if you click on the little N next to the check mark in your layer panel, you can change the blending mode. I'm personally going to go with add and I'm going to lower the opacity, but you can just try to find one that you like the effect of. It's really just on your personal preference. Once you have that, go ahead and create a new layer. This one can be on top or below the details light, but this one is going to be the details dark layer. And depending on where you create your layer or if you kind of reposition or move it in your layer panel, it might automatically get applied at a clipping mask. So if that happens, make sure that you just double tap on it and uncheck it because we don't want it to be a clipping mask. You can play with the blending mode again. This time I'm going with multiply and don't forget to activate drawing assist so we can use the symmetry on this layer as well. As for the color, go back to the darkest one you use so far. And just like for the other details layer, you can draw whatever you want. I really like, as you can see, little branches and leaves. I just like this kind of natural theme. Um, but you can experiment and I mean, you could draw literally whatever. If you wanted to draw, I don't know, like pizza slices <laughs> or cats or whatever. You could draw whichever pattern of your choice on the leaves. So again, experiment, have fun and um, 
you know, you could also just go with shapes. Here I'm drawing half like semicircles and it's super quick, but it does add a lot to the piece in terms of dimension and just textures because I'm not using autofill. I'm literally filling in the shapes with like strokes of the pencil. And for the bottom wings, I personally really like to kind of draw the actual, I don't want to say texture, but the actual pattern of wings. So those vertical lines that kind of connect the bottom to the body. And I also really like to kind of add this little section of darker color on the bottom. And what I do is, well, you, you see, I kind of draw this wave pattern in the bottom. And then starting from one vertical line, I kind of create a gradient um, like a horizontal gradient and again if my explanation in words doesn't make sense I apologize I'm really trying my best but it's not happening today for some reason but um, I think it looks you know it's, it's pretty self-explanatory so just look at the video and you should you should be able to figure it out <laughs> And at this point, you're probably going to be doing some sort of back and forth between both the details layer. So you're going to kind of try to fill in your shape um, with a good balance of lighter details and darker details. So you're going to experiment with the composition. So yeah, don't, don't hesitate to just do some back and forth, experiment. And one pro tip that I would say, at least that's what works for me, is whenever I have a big white space I just go in and add some little dots to kind of fill in the white space a little bit without having to kind of add too many illustration element because you know if you were to draw leaves everywhere or like cats everywhere <laughs> if that's the pattern you decided to go with that could look a little bit crowded so I think it's really nice having a nice balance of just simple illustrations but also just little dots or little lines and very basic shapes to kind of fill in the gaps basically. It can also be really interesting to experiment with shapes that you leave as outlines and shapes that you leave or not leave but that you fill in uh, with your pencil with kind of scribbles. That's going to add a lot of variety in your artwork and just make it more you know more interesting. And once you have your moth all nicely detailed and textured, the last step is to add uh, some decorations on the background. So to do that, go ahead and create a new layer that you're going to put below everything. In this one, you're going to rename it to decorations. Now this is optional, obviously if you just want to use the moth you would skip that. Um, but I personally like to kind of draw the decorations with the same color as the moth body. And we're going to go back with just the studio pen that we used earlier, so from the inking panel. And if you're smarter than I am, you probably noticed that I'm making the same mistake that I make like three times already in this tutorial, which is I forgot to activate drawing assist. So don't forget to activate drawing assist on this decoration layer as well. And depending what you want to use your final piece for, uh, you can draw pretty much, again, anything that you want. I have a few pro tips for you though. I think, you know, it can be a bit intimidating to start filling in the shape when it's just, uh, I wouldn't say a blank canvas, but right now it's pretty much more of a dark canvas. Um, but I find it's really useful to just start out by mapping the general shape. So um, I, as you can see, I went in and kind of draw uh, drew the little branches first, all of them, and then I started adding the leaf details when I already knew what my general composition would look like. And I say composition, but I mean, it's it's fairly simple. You just want to maybe surround your moth with some more of the same shapes and doodles that you use in the wings, just to make the whole piece a bit more coherent. But again, if you want to use this the moth for just like a sticker or something like that, you can definitely skip this step here. But I think this is the kind of piece that can look really, really good printed, um, maybe like on a phone case, like it would look really good on a shirt. So you, you could do a lot of things uh, with this piece, um, like a notebook, so many different cool things. So in that case, it, it's really nice to add a little bit more details around the moth to make it feel a bit more like a complete piece. And I mean, it doesn't take that, that long. Well, it could take that long. There's nothing wrong with that. But <laughs> all I'm saying is it's worth adding little details 
And just like for the wings, I mean, it doesn't have to be super complicated. You can have a bit more complex little doodles, but then you can just fill in the shape with a bunch of circles and a bunch of little dots, which is exactly what I'm going to be doing now and what I recommend you might do as well to make your piece, you know, because we don't also, we don't want to take the focus away from the moth. So we want the decorations around it to be fairly simple, but just, you know, we just want to add a little bit of a hoomph to the piece. Great, so at this point we're pretty much done. We can go ahead and hide the drawing guide and to do that go back in your wrench icon menu and just uh, uncheck the drawing guide. The symmetry is still going to work as you can see here but you're just not going to see the middle lines so that way you can maybe have a little bit of better idea of things you might want to fix before calling your piece done. And I got too excited calling my piece done because I actually stopped filming there but I forgot a step so I filmed it again. I'm sorry it looks a little bit different but <laughs> Bear with me. So you might want to add a shadow below your moth. So you would just put it above the um, details of decoration layer and this time you would go with almost full black. And for the brush you can use from the sketching panel the 6B brush or 6B pencil sorry. Or if you have my illustration brush which by the way I didn't say it but they were linked in the description below along with a special promo code for the YouTube people you can use the basic texture brush and again with a tilt on your pencil you're just going to draw this really simple shadow on the bottom part below your I was gonna say mushroom wow <laughs> below your moth I'm sorry guys I'm struggling like I told you uh, but yeah that's it that's seriously that's it and it's super simple but it really makes the whole piece pop and just makes it so much more uh, vibrant and alive at least in my opinion so there you go this was how to draw a moth in procreate i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help the channel it helps me it helps the algorithm it helps everything <laughs> and i would love to see why you guys create so make sure to share the results with me either on facebook instagram or twitter and before you leave, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos just like this one every single week. I'll see you soon.